Welcome to the channel. Today we are racing from Laguna Seca on our second day out, trying to improve our DR and our SR. So if you are new, please feel free to subscribe so we're trying to grow the channel and we'll jump straight into it. So as you can see we're in the Porsche 911 RSR and we're starting from the back, we haven't put a qualifying time in. Um, there's some quick drivers out the front there, um, but we're going to be seeing what we can do. And I think you you guys will be able to get quite a lot of tips from this race. Just to be a lot more conservative, this track and Brands Hatch are very similar in the sense there's not a lot of runoff. And if you do run off because of how tightly everyone's bunched up, you can make up a lot of time very quickly. So as we come down the front straight, we're just holding back, no one's in the carnage at the first corner. Just trying to hit our braking spots. As we follow a fellow grip through the first sector here. The off-board camera's looking very nice, I must say. And as you can see already, the Portuguese guy in 17th has already got a penalty going to bunch us up further although the penalty point on this track is in quite a good place for those who have got penalties because it's not very far to the next corner you can go defensive and uh, force people to go around the outside of you which isn't what you want or where you want to be able to take in somebody there the corkscrew again is another big place where there's going to be a lot of incidents especially on these early laps Hence why I'm just kind of holding back, not pushing too hard. Once again, something similar to last week's race. As you can see already, one guy's gone off. Is you will get quite a lot of people quitting as soon as they've crashed. As we go for our first move up the inside. Nice and clean. And we're already up to 14 from, I think it was 19 people to start with. So as you can see, a lot of people do quit early on. It's a long race as well. So you don't have to be forcing anything early doors. And later on I will talk you through a little lap guide. As again, one wheel on the dirt and he's spun off. When you go fairly defensive he gets quite close on the radar. But through we go nicely and smoothly. As we go for a personal best and a race best in the first set. Draw though that's not much surprise, it's only the second lap. As we jump to a lap later, we're now on the back of 12th and we're going to put the exact same move on again down into the last corner. It's a very good overtaking area. A good run on them, send up inside and out we go. You don't lose too much time overtaking there, and neither does the guy behind. He's going to be in slipstream as we come down to turn one. So we're going to have to be forced to go defensive and send him round the outside. But there's no real attack from the has a little look to try and do the cutback but then he gets on the power a little bit too early and gets very loose coming out there. So as you can see we're already in 12th, we've still got quite a number of laps ahead, 9 laps to go. And as you can see on the map up above, there's still kind of a train, the leader has gapped everyone and is going for it. We're now just going to knuckle down and really try to push on. Now, this is one area where you can make a big mistake, as I just did there. You catch the sausage curb on the inside, and it just sends you flying off, very similar to Brands Hatch in the last sector of Brands Hatch. And then, because my tyres are dirty, I then run deep of the corkscrew and go straight on. So, just something to be wary of. But again, don't need to overreact. You can get away with mistakes like that. I've kept it still going, I haven't fully spun and crashed, the tyres aren't too badly damaged from that. So once the tyres are cleaned up, I'll be back on the attack. And then once I've got past the German head, I will be going for the rest of the pack. This video just kind of proved as well, I'm 13th at the moment on lap 5, 8 laps to go. But anything can happen in these races, they're very good for SR as well. 
because it's not really a track like Mons or anything where you get too much carnage going into corners. Maybe the first corner, but the rest of the lap it's very tricky to overtake on. So it's like, as you see there, as I back out, it tends to just be a bit of a train. Another good overtaking point here into the heavy braking. Again, just send it down the inside. He does have a little look on the inside, but again, he's finding it quite tricky to keep the. I'm not that sure which car it is. Is it driving? I think it's the RS01. As again, we capture a curve, but this time it doesn't send us flying off too badly. But we're now into 12th and just chasing down P11. Just as I say that, he's been sent off flying. So we're now through into P11. A little bit of pressure from behind. But I'm sure that'll go as he's struggling a little bit with his tyre maybe. Or maybe just getting the power down. As you can see we now create a bit of a gap. We are fairly good in these last two corners. Which sets us up well for the next lap. So we jump onto lap 6 and we've now caught up to P9 and P8. And this is where strategy starts coming into it. Very similarly to Brands Hatch, you need to know your strategy that you're going to run before the race. At Lagoon Saker, the pit loss was something like 13 or 14 seconds, and so there was no point at all in changing tyres. You're going to gain not a lot of time at all. As you can see, the Brit has got a 4 second penalty, so we're just going to sit in behind him until the penalty line and then go past him. No point in trying to force it. Especially at this stage in the race, it gets a bit loose, gets on the dirt. But he then catches with the curb again and nearly loses it once again, which gives us a good run. And he's going to be all the way back there by the time we get to the next corner. Now, following the Italian in seventh, who is again struggling a little bit by the looks of it. As we try to put him under a bit of pressure, always be careful when following someone through there because if you're not watching your breaking point and you break when they do, I could have quite easily followed him in, in there. Skip the lap later again, and the eighth place, sorry, seventh place, we got a penalty. And we're now flying through the grid. Five laps to go, nearly four laps to go, and we're already into P6. We haven't had to actually had to do a lot of proper overtaking, a lot of people have penalties, a lot of people quit. We're now just going to run you through a lap, guys. So we're braking just after the curbs there. Heavy on the brakes, really hugging this, these two left handers, which then gives you a much better run out there. Next one, we're going to be using the second brake marker, just dabbing it and then letting the car roll through there. Very similar here, we're going to be using the last brake marker, letting it roll through, trying to drive out. If you run too wide there, you could be spinning if you get the wheel or at the very least losing time. Just before the second brake marker, we're braking. Again, this track's very flowing, you don't want to be braking too hard, you want to be rolling it through. Last brake marker, I mean, second brake marker there. I, during the race, was going down to second gear just to get a bit more rotation and straight back up to third gear to get on power. Start of the curbs there, braking heavy, down into gear one, trying to almost straight line the corkscrew to get as much power and much speed out of the exit. You want to go wide and then back in as we've done there, break on the curbs for this corner again, hitting the apex and driving out, which is where we were really good. And again, strategy coming into it. A few guys at the front have been pitting due to the wear on the tyres, but that will just give us an easy place. As we're up into P5 now, as we set the personal best there and the actual uh, the best lap of the race so far, quickest time. This is where managing your tyres and being a bit more conservative can really help. As you can see my tyres aren't too badly worn, the Porsche isn't too bad with that. But the guy in front is really struggling here. Again, this lane race, we don't want to be diving up the inside there. I'm not sure why he's flashing there. As we run a bit wide, he's going to force us on the outside, we're going to look for a cutback. As you can see, it's very hard to get done if he sticks it in the middle of the road. Got a good run on him, but again, nothing too crazy at this point in the race. Don't want to ruin this race, don't want to ruin ours. As we nearly get it, we get it very sideways coming out of there, but hold on to it. And 
now, just following through the last sector where we know we are good. He's struggling with the tyres. We have lost quite a bit of time on that lap, having to follow him. But at least we are in P5. Bearing in mind, started in the back, like I say, the SR is going to go up loads because it's quite a long race. Obviously, the longer the race, the cleaner you are throughout the race. The better the SR. And as you can see, out of them last two corners, and especially the last one, we've got a brilliant run. And we're going to send it up the inside nice and safely down into turn one. We're going very defensive, leaving them plenty of room on the outside, not trying to squeeze him. Get it stopped. We know he's struggling with his tyres, so he won't really be fighting back there. Yeah, and out we go. Some great trackside shots here from the helicopter. And now we're in P4. From the back of the race, we've not had too much trouble, we've not even got any um, SR or penalties, I don't believe. And now we're onto the back of the grid again, Tyrewear coming into it with the Beetle. It's really struggling. And again, we're not trying to force anything, we know he's struggling, we know we're going to get a chance to overtake. And possibly even get onto the back of P2 before the end of this race. Unfortunately, the leader has drove brilliantly and he's a good 18 seconds out ahead. And again, similarly to the Renault. We just went down inside. So a little bit of contact because so it turns back in on me. We're onto the podium now from the back of the grid. Not even pushing too hard, just trying to be consistent. And as you can see there, a bit of luck. The P2 has gone off. He's also very lucky himself, he didn't fully spin. And another beetle, another the same delivery, I think. And as you can see, another nice easy pass because Tyrewell has obviously gone for him, he's struggling to keep on the road. And now it's all just about bringing it home. Nothing silly, we're not going to catch the leader, even if he makes a mistake. So just keeping it on the track. Tyres are fairly worn now, so we're just going to bring it home. But like I say, look for these races on the daily races, this is on my second account. Um, so I was trying to improve the DR and SR and have a bit of fun at the same time. Obviously you'd be qualifying you'd be a bit more in the mid-pack and you maybe could fight them for the win. Um, but it's all about being consistent over one lap pace. Um, not making too many silly errors, not going for stupid dive bombs or anything like that. And you can get these kind of races fairly regularly. I was doing maybe filming about five of these races. P2 was my best finish, but in the other ones it was kind of P4, P5, P6, somewhere around there. And bearing in mind that is from the back. But it really helps your SR because, like I say, these kind of tracks and at Brands Hatch, more of a train type track where everyone is following one another. You don't get too many dive bombs except for the odd place on the circuits, like here, maybe turn one, say at Brands Hatch, turn one, you can get punted off. But overall, a class race. And like I say, for those of you who are looking to still improve the DR, I came to Gran Turismo quite late in 2020. I came to a Gran Turismo Sport, I mean, obviously I've played Gran Turismo's in the past. And this was what I did on my main account to start with. I picked long races because you get the most, you get the most DR out of them if you do well, the most SR out of them, and just keep on running them. Try and be consistent. And uh, it all goes from there, really. So thank you very much for watching. I will be continuing to do the commentaries from now on. And I'll see you next time.